So here we are again, at the close of another day. As you think back over the past eight to ten hours, and reflect on it, would you say that what you were into, what was accomplished, what you tried to do, was it worth it? Welcome to Night Sounds. My name is Bill Pierce, just in case we haven't come by each other at all, or recently. We're on the air with this program essentially five nights a week, and each time we come together, we get into a different area of thinking, topical material. Tonight, I've decided to call this program, Was It Worth It? And I would venture to say that most people would respond, yeah, I think it was worth it. Others would say, well, we'll have to wait and see whether it was really worth it or not. We won't be able to tell for a while. Then there may be those who say, well, I really don't think it was worth all that effort or expense or sweat, blood, and tears that I put into it. Tonight's program, Was It Worth It?, reminds me that Shortly back, I was given the opportunity to return to a great institution that I worked at for a quarter century. This institution operated seven radio stations around the country. Now by satellite and ownership, they're on many, many more. But I spent 25 years in that radio outreach. Not too long ago, I was invited back after a quarter century to help raise funds for this institution. It was a live on-air session from 11 p.m. till 6 a.m. the next morning. During that time, we would spell each other off where we were co-emceeing with another guy. And we played music and we were on the phones all night long. During certain breaks in the evening and the morning, I would take a walk around that place that I spent so long a time at. I went up the back stairways to the various floors that I had worked, the programs, the recordings, all of the activities, the writing. And I began to reflect on it all. Most of those with whom I'd worked had either retired or passed on. And seeing all the changes and advances, and reflecting back, wondering if it all had amounted to anything substantial for the Lord, as I thought of the thousands of radio programs that I had done, scores of music albums, television, drama, almost 50 years on the road in concerts, an entirely new group of people now activates this whole thing. Beautiful state-of-the-art equipment we never dreamed of back there. Did it all matter? Or were we lost in the dust as far as eternity is concerned? When I think of the new musicians, There were only a few of us, after World War II, who began in the record industry. There were only two or three basic record companies producing recordings. The company we were with then is a multi-million, maybe billion dollar outfit now, owned by who knows whom. But when we began, there were only three or four of us. All of that time that ensued during those years, who is to determine whether it was worth it all? Which reminds me of an old gospel song. Maybe you haven't heard this one for a long time. It's entitled, When We See Christ. It's played here tonight by the effulgent 102 strings of Tokyo, Japan, 
directed by Ralph Carmichael. A lush sound. Let's let it play for a while while we meditate. Coming up to the chorus, and do you remember the words? Think about it. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. All cares will fade away when we see Christ. All trials soon forgotten, troubles washed away. Then bravely run the race. Why? Those who believe in Jesus Christ and have yielded their lives to Him, their destinies, past, present, future, all assets, all possessions, yielded to Him. Will it be worth it all? According to the song, it certainly will be. Actually, most of the verbal continuity to this moment has been taken from my private devotions, where I write in a journal. And with each entry, I select a certain chapter out of the Bible, concentrate on it for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and begin to write impressions. This particular morning, I was in the book of 1 Corinthians, the letter of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthian church, chapter 15. And since I pick a key verse each time, I selected verse 58, which says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that's the verse that got me to thinking about this sentence in question, Was it worth it all? I'd like to read that same verse in another translation. Quote, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So I began to see a certain direction in my thinking. I would say that if night sounds went off the air, within three to six months we would be a forgotten issue. There wouldn't be very many who'd recall out of sight, out of mind. That seemed to be my thought process as I looked around that old place that I had worked for so many years. The new artists we played on the air on compact discs were brand new names to me. I'd never heard of any of them. And I thought, whatever happened to so-and-so? We used to record together. We spent hours and it seems years in that studio. Does the passing of time negate anything we do? For the Lord? Certainly not. Another key verse that I've selected for tonight's program is a very familiar one. Romans, in the New Testament, chapter 8, verse 28. And it reads, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to His purpose. A couple of key phrases in both of those scripture verses. One of them being the selection from 1 Corinthians, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In the Lord makes all the difference, doesn't it? Why are we doing what we're engaged in? 
just to make a living? Just to come home with a paycheck, just to pass time? What is this single central motive for what we do? Well, we might say, making a living isn't all bad, is it? If I bring home a healthy paycheck, no problem in that. According to surveys, almost 70% of the workforce is not particularly motivated with the type of work they're in. This should not be the case with those who work for Jesus Christ. Tonight's program, Was It Worth It? One writer said about the Romans verse, We know all things work together for good to those who love God. He said, I've been looking for loopholes in this verse. I've read all the liberal commentaries, compared all the translations, studied the sentence structure and word definitions in the Greek in an effort to find something wrong with it. In short, to prove that it doesn't really say what it seems to say, that all things work together. This particular pastor had just buried their son. He said, I had preached this plenty of times before, but that didn't seem to count anymore. I've always believed that you don't have a right to shout praise the Lord at a funeral, unless it's your loved one in the casket. And I figured the same principle applied here. It was fairly easy to preach the sermon that Friday night in Kansas City. But it's not been easy since. When you experience a great tragedy, you may feel you've paid your dues and that's the end of it. But I discovered that the dues are never paid up, or so it seems. So I got real serious about this verse, which promises too much to be true, because Paul the Apostle seems to be saying that if we love God and are called according to His purpose, all things, not some things, or now and then, but everything is working together for our good. And he says, we know this. This isn't guesswork. We know for an absolute certainty that this is so. I would say the strategy to come at this particular verse is not to romanticize it or oversimplify it, taking the sting out of the preceding verses about suffering. The apostle isn't saying that whatever happens to a Christian is good. A lot of bad things happen to us. We can't say that what happens is best. But it will be worked out for our good. The best. The bad things that happen to us have no weight in thwarting the good God intends for us. And it certainly doesn't mean that God works out all things for our comfort, our convenience, even health or wealth. Those things of which the Apostle Paul speaks don't serve the worldly interests of the believer. Whatever good he has in mind has to do with our salvation and our relationship to the God who has saved us. So, not everything will work out for the best. Things do not work out for the good sometimes. God works things out for the good. He oversees our lives and is active in our day-to-day -day experience. And this is done only for those who love God. And for the unsaved, those who are not believers in Christ, Nothing, ultimately, in eternity works out for their good. So the context, the things that surround this verse, are important. The primary reference to all things is the sufferings of this time, in verse 18, which reads, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time 
are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's to be revealed in us. So, that beautiful verse in Romans 8 not only looks back to verse 18, but it looks forward to verses 35 to 39 as well. And these read, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So even things like persecution and death and famine and all of these are used to profit those who love God. So that throws a little bit stronger light on verses like the ones we've read tonight. All of it facing toward a beautiful eternity in Jesus Christ. And these verses are the stimuli to take us through the famine and the sword and the persecutions and the pain and suffering which many of you are experiencing right now. Just before coming into the studio tonight, I was reading some mail. One of the letters said, I don't know how it's possible for me to be able to sleep with the pain, the physical pain I bear each day. And then they began to comment on one of the messages of night sounds because this listener could not sleep, thus turned on the radio. And as frequently happens in comment, how did you know? You centered on that exact thing that I was facing, not only the pain, but the inner turmoil, the fears, the frustrations that accompanied the pain. And for the first time, I slept like a baby. Now, I might say this is not an ego trip at all, because what I'm into is so beyond me that I don't even know how to define it or express it sometimes. I, I stumble. But God, so let's just focus on those two words for a moment. But God is the one who empowers us to reach out and touch. He uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. If only you knew what a struggle I have speaking right now. You would know, as I am reminded, of the fact that only God can make this happen. And that God that promised through these verses we've read tonight, exactly what they say can and will touch you at your point of pain and need and expectancy, no matter who you are. I'm going to ask a friend of mine, Dave Boyer, to come in and sing another old song that we may not have heard for quite a while. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His Word What a glory He sheds on our way While we do His good will He abides Sing it with him if you know it, okay? To be happy.
Dave Boyer, with a few comments and song there that we've probably faced before, but have to be reminded of. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be salvaged, saved, converted, rescued. In case you've joined us in the last few moments, a warm welcome to you. One of the things I try not to do is to get into explorative statistics. Now and then people will ask, what is your listening audience tonight, sound? I don't know. The potential audience is in the millions upon millions upon millions. But that's potential. The actual audience, no one knows. But what percentage of those who respond to you uh, indicates the entire audience? Is it one in a hundred to write or one in a thousand? That I don't know either. I don't even try to speculate on that. But I do know that there are many who listen to night sounds, who do not respond. We've never heard from you. We don't know who you are. And that number, I just have a feeling, comprises the greater majority of listeners. Those who have heard and listened and with whom we meet every night in this way, but who have never responded or written to us. So these nights were sort of nudging you just to find out who you are, where you are, if we can be of any help to you, how you're receiving us, because I want it to be a dialogue. Our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Tonight's program, Was It Worth It? Looking back on your life, even in the service of Christ, we wonder sometimes. But the essential message is, these verses, 1 Corinthians 15.58 and Romans 8.28, points to the fact that we can climb over the hurts and disappointments, over the tears and heartaches, over the graves and sleepless nights, and stand on top of that ash heap and declare, all these things God is working together for my good, ultimately. We don't know how. Again, I don't know the mechanics. But he does. And the things that we don't know about, we should leave with him. I don't know what kind of a storm you're going through, but here's one in the background. And amid the rain and the thunderclaps and the lightning, here comes the piano playing the artistry of Dino to remind us again through an old hymn that I think you'll remember. Just say those verses again. Reiterate them. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So yes, it was and is worth it. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now this is something to broadcast about and to raise your voices in song and love to Almighty God.
Thank you again, Lord, that we're reminded you use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Thank you for allowing these stumbling words tonight to hopefully, prayerfully, through the power of the Holy Spirit, make sense to those who listen. Thank you for loving us, for taking us through, for confirming to us that it will be worth it all when we see Christ. May each listener have that promise cemented in his or her heart, intellect, emotions, will, spirit, to the glory of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Once again, our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Till next time, may his strength be yours. It was worth it, so let's keep on until we see each other, okay? And a good night to all of you.